So the month of Ramadan is gone, the Quran is not gone. Taraweeh Salah is gone, the Hajjud Salah is not gone. The obligatory fast is gone, but optional fast is still remaining. Someone said it very beautifully, that sometimes more evil gets done in the name of righteousness than any other way. He, the one who was fasting in the month of Ramadan, and he could not wait for Ramadan to finish to go back to Haram, then tell him Allah has rejected all of his fast. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmaduhu wa Nusalli ala Rasulihi al Karim, Amma Bad. Aoud billahi min al Shaytan al Rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Fali dalika fadu wastakim kama umirta wala tatabir ahua ahum. Wakul amen to bima anzala Allahu min kitabi wa umirtu li adila bainakum. Allahu rabbuna wa rabbukum. لنا أعمالنا ولكم أعمالكم لا حجة بيننا وبينكم الله يجمع بيننا وإليه المصير وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is our sustainer, our nourisher, and our cherisher. And we send choicest blessings and salutations upon our beloved master and leader and teacher, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad salatan tukhrijana biha min dhulumatil waham wa tukrimuna bi nuril faham وتوضح بها ما أشكل علينا حتى يفهم إنك تعلم ولا نعلم إنك أنت علام الغيوب. My respected elders, beloved brothers and dear friends, we have just completed the blessed and the mubarak month of Ramadan, a month in which the rahma and the forgiveness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى was literally on sale. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the good deeds that we carried out in the blessed and the mubarak month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to continue to carry out good deeds after the blessed month of Ramadan. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So the month of Ramadan has left us. What is next after the month of Ramadan? <clears throat> what is needed from me and you? After the blessed month of Ramadan, the ulama have written, one of the first things that we need to bring in our lives as Muslims after the blessed and mubarak month of Ramadan is to have istiqamat on the good deeds that we carried out in the month of Ramadan. What is the meaning of istiqama? Istiqama is to have consistency in carrying out good deeds. Those who have the quality of istiqama. And those who make an effort to bring the scholarly in their life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks very highly of them in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In alladina kalu rabbun allahu thumma staqamu, tatanazzalu alayhim al malaikatu alla takhafu wa la tahzanu, wa abshiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun. Says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Verily those who say Allah is my Lord, Allah is my sustainer, Allah is my ilah, Allah is my Lord, and then they remain firm and steadfast on this commitment. What does this mean? The ulama have written, Mufti Shafi sahab rahimahullah in Ma'riful Quran mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about two things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they have iman, which is the first quality that they have. And coupled with Iman, they continue to carry out good deeds. So one is to have Iman, and with Iman to continue to carry out good deeds. So they're combining true faith with good deeds. So Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And those who will continue to carry out good deeds throughout their life, not only in the month of Ramadan, Allah gives them glad tidings in the Quran. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the angels descend upon them. And the angels come to them and they tell them, do not worry, do not fear, do not grieve. Rather you should be happy, rather you should be rejoicing. The good news Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving. He give them glad tidings. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ Give them the good news and the glad tidings of Jannah, which you have been promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that person who will continue to carry out good deeds in the month of Ramadan and equally out of the month of Ramadan, then this is the glad tidings and good news from the Quran Kareem. One person came to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very frankly and very straightforward, Ya Rasulullah, give me advice but with a condition. And that is give me something short, not too long or not too short. Just moderate. It mustn't be too long nor must it be too short. To this Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told this person, the Sahabi, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remain steadfast on this commitment till the day of Qiyamah. So I told you what Mufti Shafi sahab rahimahullah has mentioned about istiqama is not just to bring iman only <coughs> but is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and couple with that to continue to carry out good deeds. How long you must continue? ثم استقيم Ulama have mentioned the word qama comes in istiqama meaning even if it has to be till the day of qiyamah continue to carry out good deeds even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to give you a life of a million years which no one has got. But if, for example, sake, if Allah has to give somebody this life, then even in this life, continue to carry out good deeds. Till the very last moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you life. So when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised this person, he told him, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Just to give you an example of istiqama, <clears throat> Ali radiallahu anhu, the fourth khalifa of the Muslims, one day somebody asked him, said, Oh Ali, you and your wife Fatima radiallahu anha was given a special gift from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam known as Tasbih Fatimi. After you received this gift, did you ever leave out this action in your life? Ali radiallahu anhu responded by saying, that I did not leave this amal out ever in my life. Even if the Sahaba and all of us were together in the battlefield, and if I had to be in my camp at night, I made sure before I go to sleep, I made sure I carried out that amal. This is the example of consistency. Regardless of your situation, whether you're on holiday, whether you're not on holiday, whether you're at home or you're not at home, whether you're in your comfort zone or not in your comfort zone, to have consistency in the good actions that you carry out, even if it may be a little actions, small actions, to continue to carry out these actions. This, this story is mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad Tha'labi rahimahullah for those who want reference. So Ali radiallahu anhu is telling us and giving us the example of consistency, that regardless of his situation, even in the midst of the battlefield, when he had the chance to carry out the amal of Tasbih Fatimi at night, he made sure that before he went to sleep, he carried out this amal. And ulama have written, what we do once in a while does not shape our spiritual character. Does not shape up our spiritual character, nor does it shape our temperament, nor does it shape our deen. What you do consistently, what you do on a regular basis, this actually molds your Islamic identity. So Ramadan, the month of Ramadan is gone, but the Quran is not gone. The Quran is still there. So the month of Ramadan is gone, the Quran is not gone. Taraweeh Salah is gone, the Hajjud Salah is not gone. The obligatory fast is gone, but optional fast is still remaining. Your Zakat al-Fitr and your Fard Zakat is gone. For those who give Zakat in the month of Ramadan. 
But after the month of Ramadan, there are still many other options Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us for sadaqah. To carry out the good actions even after the month of Ramadan. So we have limited Ramadan only to good deeds and after Ramadan there is no continuation of these good deeds. So we have to have a standard for ourselves. Even if it's a little a day or one ayah a day or one page a day of the Quran Kareem. Try and read the Quran Kareem on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Start off your day with the Quran Kareem. Have a goal for yourself in front of you and make an achievement, make an effort and try hard to reach that goal inshaAllah ta'ala. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sahih hadith, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْقَلَّ Best of deeds are those which are little but done on a regular basis. So continue with the good deeds after Ramadan, even if it has to be one page of the Quran. If you cannot manage to read one page of the Quran Kareem, at least recite few ayats of the Quran Kareem every morning. Start your day off on a powerful note. Those who wake up in the morning and read the Quran, they know that Allah is in charge. And those who wake up in the morning and read the newspaper, they think the government is in charge. So start your day with the Quran Kareem, start your morning with the Quran Kareem, and you will see the barakat and the fruits that this Quran Kareem will bring in your life and around your life. So even if it has to be one ayah a day, one page a day, one hadith a day, one hadith a day, or be it a story of a sahabi, or be it the seerah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, try to do these amal and these actions on a regular basis. Because these actions which are done little, but on a regular basis, these are beloved in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So consistency means doing something on a regular basis, not occasionally. And for a person to have consistency, he needs certain things. And some of the qualities that a person needs to have inside him to have consistency is number one, he needs to have discipline. If you have discipline and you have a timetable and you have strength, then you will be able to have consistency in your life. So you need to have discipline, you need to have faith, you need to have courage, you need to have sincerity. Why are you doing it? You doing it for the sake of Allah, those will motivate you to carry out good deeds. If you're doing it for name and fame, when you get your name and your fame, you'll stop doing the good actions. So what a person needs for consistency, he needs to have discipline, he needs to have courage, he needs to have faith, he needs to have sincerity, he needs to have sabr. Now generally in Arabic we say istiqama. Istiqama is a small word. But the meaning of the word istiqama enshrouds over everything around it. So it includes the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it includes the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we normally say istiqama, we refer to one good action, but it refers to everything and everything. To make istiqama and have consistency in staying away from haram and equally to have istiqama and consistency in carrying out good deeds and carrying out the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ulama have mentioned al-istiqamatu karamatun. You know generally the people they say, okay, we heard there's a very famous sheikh and he's a very special sheikh and he has some special, special powers and supernatural powers. So they go to the sheikh and they say, no, he does nothing special. The ulama have mentioned al-istiqamatu karamatun. Okay, don't thing is to have istiqama is a karama on itself. Like Shaykh Muhammad Afandi rahimahullah, when some people came to meet him, and they asked Shaykh Afandi rahimahullah, they saw his lifestyle. And somebody said that he didn't see anything special in the Shaykh. He reads salah, everybody reads salah. He does dhikr, everybody does the dhikr. What's so special about him? And someone said, Ki if you look at this man's day from the morning till the evening, Every single day, there isn't a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he leaves out. Whenever he gets an opportunity of fulfilling any sunnah of the Prophet, he does it and he does it on a regular basis. So al-istiqamatu karamatun. Ulama have mentioned istiqama is a karama on itself. So the first thing that we need after the blessed and the mubarak month of Ramadan is istiqama. He needs to have istiqama. The second thing ulama have mentioned that after the blessed and the mubarak month of Ramadan, one of the first things after istiqama 
is to preserve the good deeds that you carry out. So one is to continue to carry out good deeds, but on the other hand, behind it, follow it up with good actions and make sure that after you carry out those actions, you are preserving those actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this aspect in many places of the Quran Kareem. The famous place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Allah says, the one who will bring a good deed on the day of Qiyamah, his good deed will be rewarded in ten folds. So understand what Allah is saying. Allah said, مَنْ جَاءَ The one who will bring a good deed. Allah did not say, مَنْ فَعَلَ The one who will do a good deed. Because you can do a good deed, but you can destroy it. The only way you can bring a good deed with you on the day of Qiyamah is if you preserve that good deed with you. To give you an example to understand, the ulama have mentioned, for example, they give uh, the action of, of good deeds or the example of bringing a good deed with you, they give an example of a passport. And they say you have your passport, you have everything with you. And the day you are flying out of the country, you go to the airport. And when you go to the counter, you present yourself there, they see your name, they type in your name, they see your ticket is booked, you have a valid passport and everything. And suddenly at the counter they ask you, please give me your passport. And you tell the person at the counter, Ish, I forgot my passport at home. So she will tell you, you cannot fly. Why? Because you do not have your passport. You can use how many logical reasons to prove to her that you're legal in the country and you have a valid passport. But she will tell you, brother, we respect you, we honor you and everything. But because you do not have your passport with you, you cannot pass through these gates. The only way you can pass through these gates is if you have your passport with you. In a similar way, ulama have mentioned, okay, a person might have done a lot of good deeds. But if he does not preserve his good deeds, he will not be able to bring his good deeds with him on the day of Qiyamah. So because he did not bring his good deeds with him on the day of Qiyamah, he will not be able to go forward. And this is the very same thing Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about very openly to the Sahaba. One day Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with all his companions. And Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked a question. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man al-Muflis, who is a pauper? And the Sahaba gave the same answer as me and you would have given. Okay, the one who got no money, the one who got no wealth, the one who's on the streets. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum generally used to not answer. They, was, they would always say, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. But on this occasion, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum understood the question. And they gave an answer to it. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, a pauper is that person who does not have dirhams and dinars. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La, he is not a pauper. A pauper is that person who done a lot of good deeds. He did perform salah. He did give his zakat. He did decide the Quran Karim. He performed all the righteous actions and good actions. But after doing all of these good actions, he backbited somebody. He broke the heart of another person. He oppressed somebody who was below him. You know, he slandered somebody or he made a fitna in the community. Be it through backbiting, be it through slandering. He took all of these options of sins. And eventually throughout his life, he kept on doing these things. And now this person done a lot of good deeds but he done a lot of bad deeds. Now he will come on the day of Qiyamah in the court of Allah. Picture what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. Don't just take it as a story. But understand and see, is your life the same as how the Prophet is explaining it? You done a lot of good deeds. This person done a lot of good deeds, but he was backbiting, he was slandering, he was harming people, he was oppressing people, he was breaking the hearts of people. Now he comes on the day of Qiyamah in the court of Allah. And he has a whole bag of good deeds. 
he thinks to himself, I have done enough. I got everything ready. Inshallah, I will pass the test. He comes in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah tells him, all the good deeds that you have done, where is it? He said, it's with me. I'm just explaining the hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, you backbited this person, give him some portion of your good deeds. You done evil to this person, give him some portion of your good deeds. You backbited about this person, give him some of your good deeds. You broke the heart of this person, give him some good deeds. You oppressed somebody who was working for you. You broke his feelings, you hurt him and you took extra work from him without paying him. Pay him now in this akhirah. Eventually all of his good deeds will be washed away. He'll have nothing left. But because he oppressed so many people in his life, what happens on a day of Qiyamah also after all his good deeds is finished, he still owes people good deeds. So Allah will tell him, now you cannot benefit these people. The least you can do is take their sins on your shoulders. And now everybody will giving, be giving some portion of their sins to this person. And eventually this person will be full of sins from every angle. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take this person and throw him into the fire of Jahannam. So what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us, something very important that we take, we undermine always. And the ayah I said for you before you, man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashur amthaliha. That after carrying out a good action, make sure you preserve the good actions. Don't be like this person who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about. The example the Prophet is giving of that person, but his lessons for me and you to bring in our life. To make sure we do not fall in that category of people who on the day of Qiyamah will be thrown into the fire of Jahannam after doing good deeds. May Allah protect each one of us. So the first thing after Ramadan is to have istiqamat. The second thing that I and myself and you need after Ramadan is we need to carry out and continue with good deeds after Ramadan and to make sure that we preserve our good deeds after the month of Ramadan. So how do you preserve your good deeds after Ramadan? By not abusing others, by not backbiting other people, by not doing other people wrong. After all, the ulama have written, and this is the hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you cannot benefit a person, the least you can do is don't harm anyone. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. So do not undo the good that you have done in the month of Ramadan. The reality on the ground is different today. Everybody is fantasizing and speaking about deen with different types of commas and inverted commas, etc. And everybody is saying they are doing the khidmat of deen. But many people after doing service to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are undoing the good deeds by evil actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this extensively in the Quran al -Kareem. We'll touch on one, two verses inshaAllah ta'ala. So my beloved brothers, the reality is today we take deen to do politics and to fulfill our shaitani agendas. Someone said it very beautifully that sometimes more evil gets done in the name of righteousness than any other way. We use the name of Allah and we use the Quran and we use the ahadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and present it according to our desires. This is a customized deen now. This is not the deen of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are following the Quran and the sunnah according to our understanding, according to how I feel, according to how you feel. Look at the conditions of our masajid throughout the world. How many committee members are fighting for the masjid? Each one is saying they are fighting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are all fighting for power struggle. Everybody is looking for positions. Look at the condition of the masajid. Look at the different groups that come in the masjid. Some groups will come in the masjid, they will recite one hadith, and after reciting one hadith, they will talk for 45 minutes backbiting about other people. In the different communities they are in the world, different masajids, each one has the same complaint. So don't undo the good work that you have done in the month of Ramadan. Don't undo the good work that you have done in the mornings by reciting Quran, by reciting hadith. After doing these good actions, don't undo the good work you have done. Carry out and continue to carry out the good actions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the truth is, look at our masajid, look at our communities. How much good work is prohibited and stopped just because of fitna and politics. 
Even those who want to carry out good actions with good intentions, even they are deprived because of some groups in the masjid. Because of some groups, some people doing politics and using the Quran and the Sunnah for fitna, and everybody is made mahroom of it. I'm speaking about this. The reason for it is to let you know, make sure you're not in that circle. Who is backbiting and slandering other people. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us in the Quran Kareem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, do not undo the good that you have done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of a lady in the Quran. And Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَضَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثًا do not be like the lady who undoes the threads that she has spun together and after making it firm and strong, she undoes it, she unties it. If you know what is tying a, um, tying a thread, you know, it takes so much time. They take the sheep, they slaughter it, they take the wool out and after one, one strain, they put it together and they have, they have this wheel around, you know, they take the wheel. And it takes sometimes hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks for some people. After making so much effort to put everything together, if somebody comes and he undoes it, what you will tell him? He's a foolish person. Okay, you made so much effort, so much time, you took out to make this thread and make it into a firm spun well, a spun wheel. And after making it strong, for no valid reason, no logical reason, you undone it? This is stupidity. This is foolishness. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentions that in reality there was a lady in the time of the Prophet who used to do this. If she used to, for weeks and days, used to spun this wheel and make a strong thread and she only done this to undo it. She found some enjoyment in it. So I would say it is foolish and you would say it's foolish. Take another example of a student university. He is studying in the university going for extra coaching, going for tutoring, going for coaching, going for extra classes. And he's making an effort for six, seven years. And finally, the day of his exams come when he has to just qualify. He write one exam and he will qualify. And the night before the exam, he says, I don't think so, I want to do this subject anymore. I don't think I enjoy this field. So I want to change my field. I'm leaving, I'm not writing the exams. You would say it's foolish, I would say it's foolish. He, after studying for seven years or six years, spending so much money in tuition fees, studying so hard, spending so much time, after studying so hard, when you come to the last stone, the last road, the last path, suddenly you say, I don't want to do anything. Of course, you would say he's foolish. Why he's foolish? He has no logical reason, no valid reason why he's doing this action. But take these two examples, the example of the lady and the example of the student, and put it in my life and your life. In the month of Ramadan, how many actions we carried out? We done so many good actions, we tired ourselves in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recited Quran Kareem throughout the day. We fasted throughout the day. At night we were looking for places who were performing tahajjud salah. So we performed taraweeh salah. After taraweeh salah we slept for half an hour, one hour, and straight went to those masajid that were performing tahajjud salah. So throughout the day we were worshipping Allah. Throughout the night we were worshipping Allah. We were giving sadaqah. We were giving charity in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were controlling our desires. We were controlling our eyes. We were controlling our minds. Everything was surrounded through spirituality and around spirituality. And sub suddenly the month of Ramadan finished. After making your iman firm. After making your iman strong. After rebuilding your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After rebuilding your relationship with the Quran Kareem, after reconnecting with the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, suddenly after Ramadan, you started to undo all the good you have done. This in itself also is foolish. We would say that lady is foolish, that young man is foolish, but me and you have done the exact same thing after Ramadan. We actually stopped with our good deeds and we started undoing our good deeds by harming other people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us in the Qur'an al-Kareem وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَضَدْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَا Don't be like that lady who undoes the threads after it has become firm and strong. So the month of Ramadan and the blessed month of Ramadan 
was a model for us, was a blueprint for us to follow out of Ramadan. Not only in Ramadan. Ramadan was just a training ground for us. Okay, once you prepare yourself and you are ready, throughout the year you must try and continue to carry out good actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us why he gave us fasting. Why Allah gave us fasting? Allah gives the answer himself in the Quran. He says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah gave you Ramadan, Allah gave you fasting, so that you may become God-fearing. So that may you start fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah doesn't only want it in Ramadan. Allah wants it throughout the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not only want it in Ramadan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it throughout the year. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants taqwa from us throughout the year, not only in the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan was a training ground for us. A chance to prepare ourselves. I can do it. So now inshallah after Ramadan, I'm going to continue to carry it out. If you look at the life of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the character of the Prophet, and she was asked, how was the akhlaq of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? She responded by saying, kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character was the Quran. Be it Ramadan or out of Ramadan. He was a man of good morals. He was a man of good akhlaq. Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout his life was a righteous man, a good man, a man with good akhlaq and good morals. Not only in Ramadan. Many of us, we are only good Muslims in Ramadan. Out of Ramadan, we're not good Muslims. But Allah is saying, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ I gave you this Ramadan so you become God conscious. You become Allah fearing not only in Ramadan, but throughout the month of Ramadan. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ajwad al-nas. He was the most generous of people. But he was more generous in Ramadan. The ulama take this hadith and they tell us that the Prophet was generous throughout the month and throughout the year. But he was more generous in Ramadan. So he's telling us that you should be generous in Ramadan and out of Ramadan. Only thing in Ramadan, you just increase. So as Muslims, we should carry out good deeds out of Ramadan. The only thing is in Ramadan, we increase in our good deeds. So to be a good Muslim in Ramadan and equally to be a good Muslim out of the blessed and Mubarak month of Ramadan. So we should not allow ourselves to collapse and to fall down after the month of Ramadan. We've done, mashallah, a lot of good deeds. May Allah accept everyone's good deeds. But now after the month of Ramadan, don't collapse. Continue with the good deeds after Ramadan. Don't let yourself fall down. If you know you have a friend who's falling down, help him, pick him up. We're all on the same journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all on the same journey, we want to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. We're all on the same road, we're all on the same highway. Some people are driving, some people are walking, some people are coming with horses, some are coming with donkeys, some are coming with camels. But everybody is moving. If somebody falls down, just pick him up and let him walk with you. So if you have a friend, you know somebody who has become weak after the month of Ramadan, keep on encouraging him. Do amr bil ma'roof, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas, ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. So after the blessed and the Mubarak month of Ramadan, don't let yourself fall down. Don't collapse. Lift yourself up and make sure you continue to carry out good deeds after the month of Ramadan. If you stop carrying out good deeds after the month of Ramadan, this is a major mistake you are making. You're putting yourself in the, in, the gay, in, in the shackles of shaitan. And if you do not continue with good deeds, shaitan will make you carry out evil deeds. So it will make start making you to undo the good deeds that you have done in the blessed month of Ramadan. So of course, in the month of Ramadan, our God consciousness and Allah consciousness and our taqwa was much higher than out of Ramadan. So we will not be able to carry out so much deeds the way we carry out in Ramadan after Ramadan. But the ulama have written, at least carry out some of those good deeds. Okay, every single day, make sure you perform your Salatul Fajr. Every single day, make sure you, before you go to sleep, you recite Quran. You wake up with Quran. Make sure that every single day you perform your five times daily salah. Certain things are not made maaf. As a Muslim, whether it's Ramadan or out of Ramadan, you have to perform salah. So make sure that you perform salah even after the month of Ramadan. 
You continue to recite the Quran and Kareem after the month of Ramadan. You continue to control your eyes after the month of Ramadan. And you continue to stay away from haram even if it's after the month of Ramadan. The ulama have mentioned that if a person can bring this lifestyle of his which he had in Ramadan out of Ramadan, then the truth is the day when he will leave this world, it will be the day of Eid for him. They mention if you love your life like Ramadan, the day when you will leave this world, it will be the day of Eid for you. You'll be happy to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll be excited to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So love our life like this even after the month of Ramadan. The ulama have mentioned that if you see yourself in the month of Ramadan, and in the month of Ramadan, you carrying out good deeds, and equally at the same time, you making an effort after the month of Ramadan to continue to carry out good deeds, and you staying away from haram, and you are making effort to stop your old habits, and when the month of Ramadan finishes, you see that you are alhamdulillah continuing with good deeds, and you staying away from haram, and your old habits are slowly leaving you, then this is a good sign for you. What is the meaning of this sign? Ulama have mentioned the meaning of this is that insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your Ramadan. Ka'ab radiallahu anhu used to say, Man sama Ramadana, wa huwa yuhadithu nafsahu annahu in aftara Ramadan la ya'asillah, dakhal al-jannah bi ghayri mas'alatin wa la hisab. Illa ta'if al-ma'arif, the Ka'ab radiallahu anhu mentions that person who will fast in the month of Ramadan and he will tell himself ki after the month of Ramadan I am not going to go back to haram. I'm not going to go back to my evil and bad friends. I'm not going to go back to my old habits. And if after Ramadan he continues to carry out this and follow this path then tell him he will enter Jannah eventually without any hisab, without any reckoning. And then Ka'ab radiallahu anhu goes further and he says, that person who was waiting for Ramadan to finish to go back to his old habits. So he was waiting for the month and the, the month of Shawwal to begin, the, the moon for Eid to be sighted. Why? So that he can just go back to his haram actions. He can go back to backbiting, back to slandering, be it back to haram, be it back to smoking, be it back to clubbing or creating fitna, or watching haram, or having illicit relationships, or I will stop praying after Ramadan. Then tell this person, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ وَهُوَ يُحَدِّثُ نَفْسَهُ إِذَا أَفْتَرَ بَعْدَ رَمَضَانَ عَسَى رَبَّهُ فَصِيَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ مَرْدُودٍ He's the one who was fasting in the month of Ramadan, and he could not wait for Ramadan to finish to go back to haram, then tell him Allah has rejected all of his fast. فَصِيَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ مَرْدُودِ فَصِيَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ مَرْدُودِ So I spoke to you about two things now. That what is next after the month of Ramadan? Number one was to have istiqamat and to continue to carry out good deeds. Number two was preserving the good deeds. Not to undo the good that you have done. The third point that I want to speak about inshaAllah ta'ala very briefly and that is there is no dichotomy between deen and dunya. There is no separation between deen and dunya. Generally, when we talk about ibadah, then everybody's mind thinks of salah. Everybody's mind thinks about Quran. Everybody's minds think about tasbihat, or reciting durood, or reciting the Quran al kareem So generally, when we say the word ibadah, our minds go towards Quran and towards salah, etc. But what we as Muslims have forgotten today is ibadah also extends to our worldly activities. Ibadah also extends to our worldly activities provided it's done with the right methodology and the correct intention. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that acquiring halal sustenance is a religious duty after your primary duties. So earning halal sustenance it's not only a worldly endeavor, it's a religious endeavor also. طلب الحلال فريضة بعد الفريضة That to earn halal sustenance and to acquire halal sustenance is not only a religious obligation, it's a worldly obligation also. So we have made difference and we have made it that 
When we talk about ibadah, it refers to salah in Quran and hadith. But even our business, everything is ibadah. Even earning halal sustenance is ibadah in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Provided it is done with the right intention and the right methodology. In Islam, there is no such thing as being a good Muslim in the masjid and being a bad Muslim out of the masjid. There is no such thing as this in Islam, that having religion in the masjid and having no religion out of the masjid. The beauty of our Islam and the beauty of our deen and the beauty of the work of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the beauty of our deen is that it is in the masjid and equally it is out of the masjid. The beauty of our deen is it's in salah, it is in Quran, it is in tilawah of the Quran and Kareem and equally it is our deen and beauty of our deen is in our business, in our relationship with other people, be it our families, be it our neighbors, be it our non-Muslim neighbors. Islam says everything is deen, not only Quran, not only reciting the Quran and Kareem. This is the beauty of our deen, it goes beyond that. The beauty of our deen is that it is in the masjid and equally out of the masjid. There is deen in our salah, there is deen in our tilawah, and there is deen even in our business, at our jobs, with our families, with our neighbors, with our non-Muslim neighbors, in our relationships. So we have to keep this aspect of our, in our front of us. Ki deen is everywhere. We have made it different. We have separated it. Ki deen is this and dunya is this. Everything can become deen if we have the right intention and the right methodology in front of us. So we have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. We've done righteous actions in the month of Ramadan. What is needed from us now out of, out of the month of Ramadan is to take what we've done in Ramadan out of Ramadan into our worldly lives. Because many Muslims, they are very good Muslims in the masjid. They make salam at everybody. They have good akhlaq. They have a soft tongue. But the moment they leave the masjid and they enter the shop, they are a different person. Suddenly they're only swearing, vulgarity, harshness, oppression. The moment they enter the house, they're bad people. Outside they are good people. So the beauty of our deen is it's in the masjid, it's in the house, it's in the shop, it's in the business, it's with your friends everywhere. So the point I'm stressing on now is, as we can behave in the masjid, we should make an effort to take this behavior out of the masjid also. Be a good Muslim with your family. Suddenly, when you're out of your house, you're most entertainment person. You keep everybody busy, you talk to everybody, you keep everybody happy. But in your house, you make everybody angry. So what is wanted from us after the month of Ramadan? And that is where the challenge lies. Okay, how you manage to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy in the month of Ramadan? And you manage to exert yourself and carry out all of this ibadah and be a good person in the month of Ramadan? Take it out of Ramadan and bring it into our worldly lives, inshaAllah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept us, to forgive, forgive us, to protect us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us and to give us the ability and tawfiq to continue to carry out good deeds after the blessed and the mubarak month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us, to give us the ability to preserve our good deeds. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant shifaya kamila, ajila, mustamira, daima to those who are sick. إن الله سبحانه وتعالى فل قبر في دوز هي في باستوي آمين يا رب العالمين سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك